All right, and we're back with more Echo. Woo Yay! We gotta keep this train rolling, so whenever you're ready, Brian. Uh, anyway. Something to pass the time with. Was saving this for Clint, but he's been keeping scarce lately. He comes back with what looks like a step stool, a medical satchel, and a... a whip? Upon closer inspection, it's not a whip, but a noose with, loose, with little bits of metal embedded around the edges. Oh god. Razor blades. A noose with fucking razor blades. What the fuck? Brian gets to work tying it to a conspicuous hook on the kitchen ceiling. He's incredibly quick with tying the knot, like he's done this a thousand times before. I can feel my heart pounding in my ears, each blade on the noose glinting with what little light there is in the trailer. I try to crane my neck to look at Jenna, but I'm having trouble seeing her. Brian smiles down at Micah, bending down and taking the bat's cuffs off just as quickly. What? What the fuck are you doing? Shut up. We'll be okay. Be calm. Don't struggle. Brian's voice reminds me of children's show presenters with a squeaky, reassuring cadence. The context of his words make it deeply unsettling, and I struggle against my collar restraint whenever he turns away. I have to get out of here. Brian sets down the stool squarely beneath where the noose is hanging. Step up onto the stool. You're short enough, so this will actually work. You're fucking crazy! Micah reels, away, reels back away from him. But Brian I'll be right back, guys. Head. Okay. He starts bending inward, and the bat squeals in pain. Okay, you either do what I say, or I'm going to start breaking every joint in your body, alright? Mike continues to shriek, finally wrenching free after nodding. Uh, so Harry will be right back, so who wants to be replacement, Micah? I guess I will for a time, since my character's not around anywhere right now. That is true. Go for it, Matt. Okay, okay! Jesus Christ. Put your head through the noose. I can see the turmoil on Micah's face. A thousand fire flight responses running through his head. The inside of the noose itself don't got any blades. Just the outside, so you can't be grabbing it. Micah steers through the hole in front of him. Do it! He's about to grab for the hand bat's hand again, but Micah shoves his head through just in time after stepping onto the stool. I'm in! Good. The bear reaches up and tightens the noose more firmly around the bat's neck, looking proud of himself as he does so. He's cinching it hard until it's clear the bat is struggling to breathe. With a smile, he reaches down and tugs off one of the legs of the little step stool. Brian chuckles to himself as the bat teeters, Mike clear nearly kicking the stool away. He just barely manages to keep himself upright, with the tip of his toes catching the edge. His cheeks flare as more of his weight is having to be held aloft by his neck, the strain causing his neck veins to bulge. He gasps like a fish for breath, swinging his hips from one side to the other to get in a more solid standing position. I can see him resisting the urge to grab the noose, a knack that would surely strip his fingers to the bone. Brian, meanwhile, chuckles to himself. Tickled deeply by the display. There you go. Brian's turned away from me now, but even from this angle, it's clear he's squeak through his. No, just fuck Brian. Just no. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. no. Yeah. Just straight up no. I'm petrified, wanting to scream out to make him stop, but not daring to make a sound. This is what Duke was warning Brian not to do. And he did it anyway. I close my eyes, praying to see that weasel again, to put a stop to all of this. 
Hey, don't think I forgot about you all. When I opened my eyes again, he's looking directly at me. Well, you two at least. I mean, given a choice of a bunch of guys and one girl, what kind of squeak would pick the girly? He says the word squeak with distaste. The bear beginning to reach into his little satchel. He looks to Jenna as he pulls out what looks like a long spool of string. Alright, so here's the scene that you might want to dip out on, Sam. Cool. I'm gonna deaf and just poke me when it's done. Okay. Sure. The others tell me you were a bit of a bitch anyway. At least that's what your brother said. I keep expecting Jenna to start speaking. Talking down. Full psychoanalysis mode like in those thriller movies. But right now, she's completely silent. Neo stirs slightly beside me, mumbling something incoherent. Brian has scissors now, and he kneels down in front of us. I begin to feel faint as he points to the edge of them toward me with a smile. Instead of cutting me, he begins snipping along the side of my shorts and underwear, cutting up to the waistband. Wh what are you doing? Micah teeters in the kitchen, letting out a blubbering, choking sound as he struggles for breath. Saw you a few weeks ago. You had no eyes. Heard you talking to the empty rail yard. Saying that you two need to stay close. Thinking I should oblige that request. What? The eyeless chase. The thing we saw earlier? Leo stirs some as I shout, slight, shifting slightly as Brian does the same to his pant leg. Don't worry, I won't get your bits out. He reaches into his little medical bag and pulls out a suturing needle. I think you're supposed to shave the fur before you start doing this, but oh well. No, please, you don't need to do this. The thing you saw, it wasn't me. I've seen it too. Brian blinks, canting his head slightly. Well, I figured that much. That he wasn't real. You still have your eyes for now. And that goatee. He's pushing our legs together now, and my heart feels like it's in my throat. My vision's starting to blur. Don't squirm now, or it turns to joint breaking time. And I can always stitch other things together. Oh god, no. The needle hits me first, at my mid-thigh. I cry out, squeezing my fist against my chest. I want to deck him, punch him, do anything to make him stop. I yell so loud I slobber onto the front of my shirt, tears once again welling in my eyes. I can feel the metal pierce through my skin, far too deep as it tears through muscle and tugs it back out again. Theo begins to rise slightly as it goes through his leg, though he doesn't wake. That's one. Stop! I start to feel faint as blood pools from the new holes in my thighs. Though though the needle re-entering promptly wakes me back up. Fuck! Two. Hannah? Sorry. Stop. Jenna speaks from the corner of the room, her voice unlike I've ever heard her before. Quiet. So much so I don't know if Brian even heard her. Three. Micah gasps. Oh, everything okay? Who's making that noise? Oh, sorry, DJ just came back with, uh, with the goods. Hey, DJ, guess what? Yeah, I think I used right. DJ, guess what's happening right now? Yeah, I hate it. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. He's he he's he doesn't have headphones on. He's uh, like he. Okay, I, he said, "Oh, I ate it." I thought he was saying, "Oh yeah, I hate it." <laughs> <laughs> no, there was a bit of ice cream on the spoon that he gave me, and I was like, "Huh?" And then and he was like, "I ate it." I was like, "Ah, okay." 
I get you. <laughs> Let me know when DJ can hear, because this is going to be fun to explain to him. Okay, I'm back. Oh, welcome back. Mike is gasping. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> and yeah, Sam's been deafened. Well, uh, I'll ask somebody to send her a message when we're through this scene, because this is the one involving her and Phobia. Yeah. I do yeah, want DJ to should... experience this, though, so. I mean, it's a nice bonding moment between Chase and Leo. Oh, of course God. DJ should see this. <laughs> I'm not sure how he thinks about the, their bonding session. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting closer together than ever. Quite literally. Um, let's say, Alan wants you to pop on your headphones. Here you go. Blarg. You ready, DJ? No. So, guess what's happening, DJ? Uh, I mean, Brian's being Brian. I mean, yeah, yes, no. but he's taking it up a level. So you remember how he kind of like really went for like the psychological torture in Leo's route? Uh huh. Yeah, he's going physical torture now, baby. I mean, it's what he does. Uh, could you uh, maybe not tear it in front of the mic? Nah. I you're just ripping it to pieces, huh? Yeah, I'm just saying... They make it so that you can tear the lid off. <laughs> so, uh, just to let you know, DJ, what you missed, uh, Brian pulled out a noose that had razor blades all throughout it. However, uh, the inside of the noose doesn't have razor blades. He's put Micah inside that noose and has uh, basically put him on top of a stool kicked out one of the legs, so Mike is now trying his best to avoid uh, basically having the stool come out from under him, causing him to start strangling himself through the noose. And also, if he tried to like grab the noose with his hands, he would rip his hands to shreds thanks to the razor blades on the outside. So, that's what Mike is going through right now. Chase and nice. Leo are having what's called a bonding moment. Oh, that's certainly a word for it. That's the word Brian used for it. We're make Brian's wanting to make sure that Chase and Leo are close together. And to that, he's pulled out sewing thread. Oh, is he going all like um, human centipede on them? A little bit. So he's grabbed Chase and Leo's legs, put the thighs together, and he's currently stitching them together. Oh my. Okay, do you want me to get a napkin? Yes. Okay. I'll be a pick. All right. So you guys ready for this nightmare to continue? Because Sam is currently waiting for us to get through this scene so she can rejoin. No yeah, we can ready? go. Hannah's, okay. Hannah's getting some napkins because ice cream spilled. Okie doke. Here, she's back. Also, DJ, I'm sad that you didn't get me ice cream. Like, what the hell, man? I mean, we were going to the to the uh, to a different location, Dairy Queen, not your location, Dairy Queen. So, I'm you so don't get sad any. Sad by this. I thought we were friends, and then you do this to me. Obviously. First, the betrayal by Harry with him playing Ultimate Chicken Horse without me. Now, the betrayal by you getting ice cream without me. Do I even have friends? No. No. Harry, I can time you out again. I know. I just, you left yourself open. Alright. Uh, also, uh, hey, DJ, make sure you watch out what you do in front of your mic, because your mic is very sensitive tonight, it seems. Okay. That was Randall. Ah. <laughs> Randall, make sure that you're careful in front of Hannah and DJ's mic. It's very sensitive tonight, it seems. All right, back to this. Micah gasps, wobbling erratically as blood drips into his from his left hand. He must have gripped the rope for a second and cut himself. <coughs> Don't fall, kid. Brian calls to Micah before looking back. 
He has a lowered gaze as he stares directly into my eyes, pushing the needle in again. So deep, I'm sure it scrapes the bone, and it's like my whole body has been lit on fire. Snot dribbles down my nose. I can't fucking take it anymore. Ryan keeps counting. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Leo's writhing has gotten more intense, and each tug of his legs spreads the puncture wounds more. I can't take it. Something begins to move in the corner of the room, in the closet beside the bedroom. I can't tell if it's just my blurred vision, or whether the door is actually opening. In the kitchen, the stool tips over, and Micah is suddenly dangling freely. Oh, God. More choked gurgles escaping the increasingly red-faced bat. His arms begin to flail, wildly at first, and then in a more coordinated rhythm. It takes me a moment to realize he's batting his wings. He's flapping as hard as he can, and finally, it looks like he manages to get a gulp of air. His hovering is erratic, never enough to keep him completely suspended. Brian peers over his shoulder, eyebrows raised slightly. Help him! Brian ignores her. Would you look at that? He can fly. The exertion is clearly taxing Micah, and he's still having trouble breathing. His face continues to turn an unnatural hue. He can't keep this up. Help him! Out of the corner of my eye, the closet door shifts open further. Alright, now you guys can send Sam a message. Because I don't think she wants to miss this. Uh, who's sending her a message? I nominate Seb since there were no volunteers. Me? Yes. Okay. Okay. Goodbye. Set. Beep. All right. So, um, to give you a brief description of what you missed, Sam. Okay. Um, so, were you there for Micah and the uh, the noose? Yes, I was. Okay. So Micah had the stool kicked out from under him, and well, not kicked out, but it fell out from under him. So now he's been flapping his wings to try and like hover fly a little bit, but he's starting uh -huh. to like lose uh, ability to do that. As for the reason why I had you leave, brief clip notes on it. I'm going to just say one sentence. Brian okay. chose to sew Chase and Leo's legs together. Oh, no. And I knew that it was going to get a little graphic, so that's why I was like, yeah, you, you don't want to see that. So I appreciate it. But that's going to be a plot point from here out, so that's why I had to tell you that it happened at least. Okay. Fair point. Uh, but now, there's been something moving in a closet in the back of the trailer, uh, while Jen has been pleading for help, so. Oh, wow. Out of the corner of my eye, the closet door shifts open further. There's something inside. Someone. They're a reddish-white color, half-cloaked in shadow. Eyes wide, mouth open. It moves like there's a strobe light behind it. It's motions choppy and unnatural. Uh, who's making that noise? Sorry, that's me. Oh, I'll okay. mute. It's like it's not moving at all, but rather a series of images project in front of my eyes, changing every second. And each second, it gets closer. It looks to be as tall as Brian, and possibly slender, with arms and legs that look warped and burnt. It has no eyes, no mouth, just holes. Next thing I know, it's in the kitchen, and Micah just drops. The bat hits the floor with a heavy thud, the cut noose still around his neck. 
Brian sees it now, too. He reels back just as he begins to approach him. They're real! Is all he can say before the bear is yanked with an immense violent force, his body bending like a flicked rubber band. The contents of his pockets, one of his pant legs, and a small chunk of flesh smack against the kitchen wall. The rest of him goes flying out the window, along with the figure. My mind immediately thinks back to when I was a kid. I'd seen plenty of stuff, lots of horrible things. But the psychiatrist had said that that was normal, that sometimes kids hallucinate. Not like this, though. There's glass shattered across the stained carpet. Blood stains dapple the turquoise polka dot drapes, swaying slightly in the new breeze that comes through the broken window. This is real, right? Past all reasonable doubt, it has to be. The shock of the situation had eclipsed the pain in my leg, though that brief respite fades quickly. It's wretched and niggling, like being stung by twenty little bees every couple of seconds. Rivulets of Leo and I's blood pools together and run between our connected thighs. I writhe against my restraints, my head spinning and heart pounding. Every base animalistic neuron in my brain is firing to flee the situation, to make the throbbing stop and just to find safety. But there's nothing I can do but gasp for breath, one eye on the window and the other on the struggling, bleeding silhouette of Micah. My vision blurs, and when refocuses, the bat is up on his knees, yellow eyes wide and bloodshot. He says something. His voice is high-pitched and quaking, utterly indiscernible. At least to me, right now. He scrambles on his hands and knees, coughing and wheezing while yanking open several of Brian's kitchen drawers. Dirty silverware, cooking utensils, and faded yellow receipts shower the floor. The ruckus is immense, and I'm sure the thing outside hears it. That is, if it's even capable of hearing. He pulls another drawer completely out of its socket, an assortment of bottle openers, chip clips, and twist ties clatter forth. Panting out ragged breaths, his fingers grab something glinting in silver from the new pile. His eyes widen. Keys. For a moment, his gaze trails to the door, then back to us. He coughs again, swearing some insanity that I can't fully make out. Scampering along from the kitchen to the other side of the room, he begins using the key on Jenna's restraint. There's a satisfying click, and I hear Jenna gasp. Thank you. She whispers. Micah wastes no time, moving back into my sightline for a moment to reach Leo beside me. You? You? No, there Leo is basically like waking up from being unconscious. Y you? Leo moans, seemingly aware of the bat's presence as a large paw reaches out to touch the bat's soft mane of white fur. Micah stops for a moment, blinking at some at the still, definitely out of it wolf. Leo's arm goes limp again, the bat exhaling a coarse breath, trying to steady his own shaking hand as so he can unlock the wolf's restraint. Jenna quickly heads to the kitchen, grabbing a knife from the torn out cut cutlery tape drawer. I'll get you out with this in a sec. Just don't squirm, okay? She looks at me, her turquoise eyes wide and glistening. I'll be fine. Leo murmurs. Jen doesn't even look at him as she be brings the blade between her thighs. With a little slice, she manages to cut through the first stitch, and a fresh runnel of blood leaks from the puncture points. It's as if the wound is hissing at me, my ears ringing as I clutch my fists against my chest. Don't scream. Don't scream. Ah! I whimper as the knife snicks the second, but doesn't quite break the string. Instead of tugging up, widening the piercing and tearing at the skin. Leo stirs, his fist clenching as his half lit eyes try to focus on Jenna. Mm. 
<laughs> that is not how that should sound, in my opinion, but okay. It's NNG, what do you want? It's like, mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I mean, you're going to be forceful still. Leo's like pass the fuck out and he's waking up from pain. Nah. I mean, okay. That's more I accurate. Don't know. Yeah. There you go. Okay. He bears his fangs briefly, trying to stand up. This pulls harder at the stitching. And I can't tell what will give first. The stitches or the flesh on my legs. I cry out between grit teeth, Jenna trying to pin the wolf back down. Stop moving. You're only making it worse. Jenna tries to cut the stitching a little faster now. She cuts one rung. Two. Three. Fuck off me! I look down and see Jenna's blade tip had stuck into the wolf's thigh, even more blood trickling from the fresh wound. Just be still. I've never heard Jenna so tense. Leo only rides more, reeling against his restraints with such ferocity that Micah can't undo the lock. God, just fucking give it to me. The bat starts fiddling with the lock and extends a hand out to Jenna, the fennec look turning to look at him. She doesn't move to give him the knife, but she does loosen her grip. Micah doesn't hesitate and plucks it from her with the deftness of a pickpocket. Gingerly, he places the flat of his free hand against Leo's chest and with the other makes a quick slice between our legs in one motion. The pressure keeping us together is suddenly gone and I feel I can freely pull my leg away from his. The pain is still immense, but nowhere near as bad. You are so fucking lucky. I look up at the small bat as he moves to unlock Leo's restraint. If I'm lucky, I certainly don't feel like it. Yeah? So are you. The bat lets out a sharp exhale as Leo is freed. Surprisingly, he stands right up, albeit less steadily. It's still not entirely clear that he knows where he is, blood still running down the side of leg. Micah takes a stuck cautionary step back, though the dazed wolf doesn't appear to be outwardly hostile toward him. In fact, the two meet each other's gazes for a moment, and Leo sobers slightly. What? He mumbles, bracing himself with a large arm against the wall. As Micah shifts his freeing efforts to me, Jenna nimbly steps around the broken glass and makes her way to Brian's fridge. She pulls open the door, tugging out various foodstuffs and plastic bags. Finally, she pulls out several bottles of water and hurries back. Click. I gasp and holding my throat as I jerk my head forward. Big gulps of air enter my lungs with a refreshing sensation unlike anything I've ever felt. My whole body buzzes with a mixture of pain and relief. Jenna quickly hands me a bottle of water, and I don't hesitate to start chugging it. Well, I try to, and I realize the cap is still on. After rectifying my error, I can clearly see, I can see clearly the frazzled look in Jenna's eyes. Her usually cool demeanor, gone, and in its place is a deeply unsettled visage that matches how I feel. She briefly looks off to her side, toward the broken window, then back to me. Chase, I... Micah takes two of her water bottles, giving one to Leo and one to himself. <clears throat> that thing... Jenna nods. Yeah. Was that the thing you mentioned to me? On the hike? Her fur bristles, the fox finding the notion incredibly uncomfortable. I don't know what that was. Something 
The authorities will investigate later, I suppose. No, oh, I wasn't fucking seeing shit. That was really some burnt motherfucker leaping out of that sick fuck's closet. Micah squeezes the bottle, splashing his face with the cold water. Must have been seven feet tall at least. A burnt man? Is that all he was? Just another victim of Brian's cruel tortures? Stashed away until now? Do you think he's still outside? Maybe. Jenna responds in a hushed tone. I doubt Brian's in much of a threatening state, though. Yeah. We all seem to be fixated on the broken window. Though none of us are jumping out at the chance to investigate more closely. No one except for Leo. I glance over and see the big wolf stumbling forward, arms outstretched. His movements are jittery, robotic, his maw hanging open slightly. His eyes still aren't fully open, and he grasps the windowsill and peers into the darkness. He stays there, motionless. Seconds pass, at least ten, and finally he turns to face us. Never seen that before. Leo mumbles. You see anything? Yeah. Micah stares at him, bug-eyed. Well, what do you fucking see? Red. Micah sets his bottle, water bottle down, picking back up his knife and the contents of Brian's pockets. <clears throat> Alright, fuck this, we're getting out of here. If that, if that person we totally just saw wanted to do us in, it would have done so. So, I just want to get a car, get some distance from this place, call the cops on a payphone. He furrows his brow at something on the ground before picking it up and shoving it into his shorts. And spend at least the rest of the night cooped up in one of those 24-hour pancake houses where the wait staff is always around to watch you. Carl! Gotta save him. Leo blurts this out like a broken, like a spoken belch, his disoriented eyes seemingly swimming in their sockets as he looks at no one in particular. The notion swells up like a knot in my stomach. First fear, then guilt. Carl had been subjected to this for days. And maybe he knows more about that thing in the closet. And that's a job for the police. She says this with an initially reassuring tone, though she falters after a moment. Though, those gunshots earlier. We should have heard police sirens by now. <clears throat> I'm assuming the phone service and internet is still down. So let's find a fucking car then. We drive to Peyton, rat out those murder, uh, murder abiding fucks. I call friends, and we never look back. I do love the I called friends. Like Mike is like, y'all fucking left me with Brian. Y'all ain't my friends anymore. Y'all are bitches and dead to me. <laughs> I, love I mean, I'm gonna, to be fair, I'd be doing the same thing. Oh, no, no, well, I agree. And... I, that's what I'm saying. I love that about Micah. He's like, immediate, like, no hesitation. Fuck you people. <laughs> you were saying, uh, DJ? Well, and I mean, you know, 
they they hang out with Brian and he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Jenna sighs, closing her eyes for a moment, then nodding. Yeah. That's as sound of an idea as any. Let's go. <clears throat> I'm not seeing any car keys here. Pretty sure Duke has his ride. <clears throat> Gotta save Carl. Now. Liu interjects, and Jenna just looks at him, dumbfounded. Did you want to leave fries before I throw them out? No. Oh. Go <laughs> right ahead, Leo. I'm sorry for laughing, Harry. <laughs> I just like the... <laughs> <laughs> I just liked hearing that, like, T20 fries. <laughs> like, the middle of this scene. <laughs> hey, would you like fries with that? <laughs> you just got out of the torture scene. You want fries now? <laughs> uh, hey, bud. Uh, you doing okay? She speaks up, gesturing toward the door flippantly. We'll be in Peyton. You go right ahead and tell us how that goes, hmm? Leo blinks slowly, before again slowly meandering to the door. Wait, what? I try to stop him, wincing at the pain in my leg. Oh, Jesus. I manage to grab his fur, and that staggers him enough to stop for a moment. I wasn't serious. Leo, please, come on. We'll stick together and get this taken care of. Carl. God, I love Leo. I can feel him pulling away, so I try to think of something to get him to stop. In fairness to him, Carl. I mean, look, I will give this, like, a couple points on this. It is a noble goal to try and rescue Car Carl. I fully agree with that. Um, the thing is, though, he's not in any condition to do this, in my opinion. No. Nope. He's, nope. he's got a concussion. His leg is fucked up now. And he's... And to be maybe not that fair to Leo, he kind of showed that the reason why he was really focused on saving Carl was more to win points with Chase than it was to get Carl back. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say, under the right state of mind, I think uh, Leo is a good man and would actually be out to save Carl because that's the right thing to do. But as we've seen in multiple routes, when the hysteria hits, Leo isn't usually that mentally sound anymore. Usually. He loses his shit. And, and also, if you get a concussion, you're also, or like any, like, Traumat like traumatic head wound like you're also more likely to be more impulsive and not as good at making decisions oh yeah so yeah <laughs> Neil man we need you I need you I squeeze his paw briefly just enough to show him I'm here as his eyes close once again like a lost child he squeezes back physical contact feels nice, though after being stitched to him, I'm relieved when he lets go. You too good to move? I take a tentative step, and Jenna takes me by the arm in case I fall. The pain is dizzying, and I have an overwhelming urge to just down a bottle of ibuprofen and crawl into a corner. But I definitely can still walk. I'll manage. Jenna smiles faintly at me. I'll help him. Leo, in all his stupid glory, says nothing as he pulls open the front door and steps outside into the dark. Micah steps up beside us, his skinny arms folded tightly over his chest. Okay, urgent care for him and then Pancake House. Somebody get Yay. this boy his pancakes. 
Ooh. I want my pancakes. Now I want pancakes, god damn it. Told you it was only a matter of time before the liberals it is, it is. came it's for our day. pancakes. Guys, guys, it's the final day. Sunday. Hey. Hey. I have it's this bad. image of them hanging out at a 24-hour 24, uh, pancake house now. <laughs> I mean, Waffle there's... house. Maybe we'll see Waffle it. Waffle house. All right. More well, Denny's. You know what? I think to celebrate getting into the final day, we should do that next time. So say yep. goodbye, everyone. Bye, Bye, everyone. Bye, people, whoever you are. Bye.